Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are gonna be finishing the narration for the guide ahead to side story in Arknights. And oh boy, today's episode will I think be the longest out of the three episodes in total. Considering I'm doing three stages plus uh, plus uh, plus the epilogue one. And of course, considering this is gonna be the finale of the uh, narration also gonna just ramble about sort of sort of review style, not really review style at the end of uh, at the end of the thing. Uh, one side note that I want to point out here, usually the way I record these, uh, these are all these long narrations are all single big takes from start to finish. So for newer people to the channel, just just to say this, Yes, this is. There are no cuts in these, no breaks, no nothing. Usually, at least, unless someone interrupts me and I have to stop in between, like stages. But then, in that case, it's literally just me pressing the stop button on recording. There are usually no cuts. I'm saying this considering that today's episode is going to be very long, and probably after the first two stages, especially after the second one and the two people talking at the end of that one will probably uh, strain my voice quite a lot. So there's gonna be a cut. If anything sounds weird after that, hopefully it won't. I'll take a listen to it as well, but uh, in case voices or something sound sound weird after that, you just know I, I took a break and uh, gulped down like a whole cup of tea just, <laughs> just to get my voice uh, back under control. But in other news, Let's do the usual of on the last episode. And um, I have to say, there is not... I didn't have to take notes like for the first episode that kept jumping the hell around. Because last episode was pretty much one straight line. We begin where we left off, at Cecilia's home, with Ezel, Cecilia uh, running into Oren and Fiametta bumping into them. Or they have a discussion, Oren leaves, Fiametta takes Cecilia and Azel under her care and they go towards the Basilica. After which they uh, stop at what I believe is probably a square, considering how many people are supposed to be around them when they are talking about it. Because Cecilia felt a bit hungry, so Fiametta offered to get some snacks for her. And they hear, or rather Cecilia hears, a familiar tune being hummed in the background, to which Azel finds the cart, food cart that has the tune that she hears, which is being hummed by one of the two cart owners. He calls them over, they have a little discussion, and in a sort of accident, uh, the hood of the female owner of the cart gets flinged off and uh, we see that she has Sarkas horns or rather that she is a Sarkas herself. Our partner tries to cover for her but then <laughs> little Cecilia chimes in oh your horns look like papas they're beautiful which triggers Azel to be like oh shit what the hell did she say just now even though he suspected already obviously that something is wrong. Uh, the two stall owners begin to run a pursuit ensues, uh, Fiametta picks up the chase, uh, there is a bit of conflict, and Fiametta tells um, Azil and Cecilia to go to the Basilica by themselves, and that he should keep his terminal on so he can be tracked. He proceeds to do so, at least the terminal part, but ditches the terminal somewhere and um, proceeds to take Cecilia to where her mother's final resting place is gonna be. After they arrive at the church with the cemetery, they run into Anduin. Anduin, who is a former partner to uh, Mustima, Lemwin, and uh, Fiametta, and is tied to what happened in their past very heavily. And, uh, well, I can summarize the big portion of the next section with, uh, they have a very, at least in my opinion, very well written and, um, explained view of life and death from both, well, mostly from the perspective of the person who is being left behind. And 
gotta admit, when I was reading for that uh, uh, originally, before the narration, that was very well written. I like that whole section where Anduin just philosophizes around uh, the idea of how the uh, the people who are left behind should see that and how they do see it and uh, all of that. Very good. I liked all of that. That was pretty well, pretty well written, that whole section. Uh, but on the day of the funeral, um, Fiametta and Mostima arrive as well. They deduced where Isla has uh, <laughs> disappeared off with Cecilia. A conflict ensues between Fiametta and Pesha, more, more so than anybody else. And... Uh, I can't really describe what happened there because I'm not too sure, but in the conflict, the parties get split up. Ezel goes with Fiametta and Mustima back to the Basilica, while Cecilia is being left behind with Anduin and Pesha. And oh, and right, the stall, stall one of the stall owners uh, by the name of Roselia. And it doesn't. Not really a spoiler, spoiler, but it doesn't really get explained here who Rosalia is. She does seem to be sort of important to the story, but from what I deduce from what Anduin says at one point during this section, um, going about a reunion, could she be, and this is pretty much also based on what Cecilia says, but is she potentially Cecilia's um, older sister or something? Considering that uh, it's being hammered into our head so far that uh, the child between a Sancta and any other race is always going to end up being the other race. So is that uh, is that uh, woman supposed to be maybe Cecilia's older sister? Because she does kind of look alike. And even Cecilia says the way she uh, <laughs> talks and dodges, dodges certain subjects when you ask her about them uh, is like her mother's. So... That's kind of like a little hint, maybe? If the story ever continues in the future, I hope this will be kind of addressed. Would be kind of interesting to see if that really is her sister. But we'll see. We'll see if the story gets ever picked up, considering how far into uh, the future this one is. But yeah, the episode ends pretty much with uh, uh, a look at Anduin, Cecilia and Pesha who are in a safe house. Anduin telling Cecilia about the uh, meaning of the song that uh, Cecilia and Rosalia kept referencing. They all sing it and at the end Cecilia asks him about what he is looking at and he answers with the old bell tower in Laterano and she uh, says that she wanna, wants to go there. And that is where we left off last episode. So, let's begin today's narration on part number six. Titled Requiem says, Whether jests or fate, or inevitable coincidence, nothing can hold him in his stride. Let's begin with the before part. Let me also, while this loads, bump up the game volume. And let's go. <clears throat> oh, Hazel, good morning. Off to work. Good morning. I don't have work today. I'm taking a couple days off. Up so early on your day off. And look at you frowning like that. Is something bothering you? Getting bullied at the Notoria Hall? I told you it may look like a decent place to work, but it's to a total misery over there. <laughs> Here, Hazel, I just bought some cupcakes. Take some. Let your worries go. It doesn't matter if work is bothering you. It's just a job. Don't think about it on your own. Uh, uh, don't think about it on your days off. Besides, aren't you still a trainee? If the ceiling caves in, it's gonna crush all your bosses on top, uh, on top before it even reaches you. Don't make it so hard on yourself. Cheer up! It's not worth getting upset over. Not worth it, huh? Still letting it bother you? <laughs> anyway, I'ma get going. Thank you for the cupcakes. 
It's an early morning that couldn't be more normal. Hardly anyone on the streets yet. But it shouldn't take much longer for the crowds to form the usual hustle and bustle to return. This is exactly what Lateran life is. How about the crepe? No thanks, I've got these cupcakes. Oh, it's you. The crepe shop on the corner there only sells to hundred of their signature crepes each day. You need to get up early to have a chance at buying one. Thankfully their hours haven't changed. What are you doing here? I'm out for a walk. In a city that has an arrest warrant out for you? Sure. What happened to the people at the Ecclesia Requientum? They're all in a safe place. Once everything is over, they all leave Laterana with me. Where to? Who knows? Aren't you going to take Cecilia with you? No, she left. Hmm? Uh, how did you... She has something she must do. It may seem trivial right now, but she's found her path and she will continue down it, overcoming obstacles we could never overcome, treading into predicaments that we wouldn't dare to face, and making it far away to far away places that we could never imagine. What are you talking about? Relax, Brother Easel. She's far more brilliant than you and I could ever dream to be. But she might need you. Why me? I'm nothing special. This is pretty embarrassing to say, but I was playing the hero in front of her the whole time. I told her my words, uh, my word is my bond, and I wouldn't mind losing my job. But after I got home last night, I spent the whole night freaking out about everything that happened. A mixed blood sancta, a fallen angel, a legatus, the conference at the basilica, the sarcas, and a strange heretical group. How did I get mixed up in all this? I thought I just wanted a decent job. A job, a desk job would be all the better. I would go to work and leave on time, live a quiet, peaceful life. I figured that'd be pretty good for me. Every, everything that happened the last couple of days could be just an interlude. I should count myself as lucky for being able to get away from it all before it's too late, and in a couple of decades I can tell stories about it to my friends. That'd be a pretty solid life, wouldn't it? Maybe I shouldn't even be uh, talking to you right now. I should just turn and run. Aren't you going to run then? Hmm. There's no need to fool yourself. How am I supposed to know what, uh, what it is that I really want? You and Cecilia both ask the same question. She asked you that too. Perhaps a little different. And how did you answer? I told her a story. Suddenly feeling like I shouldn't listen to you. Why? I just get that sense that you might... Uh, that you know how to influence people. What if you're about to sucker me into something here? As long as you don't want to, you won't be. That sounds awfully sketchy. I'm here only to give you a message. What comes next for you? The, the, what comes next is for you to decide. Cecilia is going the, to the old bell tower. What is she doing there? Saying her goodbyes. Is something wrong? Oh, Cecilia, aren't you scared walking the streets all by yourself this early in the morning? Where, where are those friends of yours? Guide, it's Oren. No matter. We'll see what he's planning first. There is something I need to do here. You're so little, but you have lots of big ideas going around in your head, huh? I really don't get what you, uh, what that guy is thinking, but... Sorry, little girl. I can't let you go. Are you taking me to the Basilica? 
The Basilica? No, no, Cecilia. I can't let you go to the Basilica. As long as you don't uh, go to the Basilica and the old man, you can go anywhere. At first I thought it wouldn't be so bad if Anduin took you away. He's had a change of heart, but it's no biggie. I'll do it myself. It would be bad if I go to the Basilica? It's hard to say, Cecilia, hard to say. You're actually really important to me, you know? Feoria and I were friends a long time ago, but still... <laughs> anyway, your very existence is much more useful than whatever it is you're thinking up in your little brain. If you put it to good use, you could be the greatest danger to Lateran City in a long time. After all, you're a Sarkas, but you also became a Sancta. I don't really want to put Lateran in danger, but I don't need uh, but I need some leverage that can influence things. A bargaining chip chip that I can use in a deal. And you could be such a precious bargaining chip. I wouldn't want to see you lose your effectiveness over a tiny little th threat. I don't understand what you're saying. You don't need to understand, Cecilia. I'm just trying to show you I'm sincere. I won't do anything to get you hurt. I never want to resort to violence if peace is an option. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Not now. Could you move out of the way? I'm going to that bell tower. Hmm. Didn't you hear her? She wants you to get out of, the, out of her way. Mr. Hazel, you came! Yes, Cecilia. I promise to help you find your mama and there... Uh, and be there when you said goodbye to her, right? Ah, oh, this is so touching. A mixed blood girl between a rock and a hard place. With an executor who's true to his word. Am I watching the late Lateran soap opera of the year? <laughs> Makes me want to clap for you too. But uh, if I could, I would rather not be the villain here. <laughs> this is no fun. <sighs> Mr. Easel. Sancta can't point their guns at their own kind, but violence comes in other forms. So, that's no hill to die on, right? Now, Cecilia, go. The bell tower is straight ahead. But I'll promise you one more thing. I'll be fine. All right. I'll wait for you at the top, Mr. Easel. Very nice. You came prepared, huh? I didn't expect you to be able to hold me here. But still, even if I don't like screwing around with empathy, I can feel the fear in you. Save it. Have you ever considered that, that we might be walking the same road here? We are definitely not right now, at least. <laughs> Show me what you got, then. Have you even realized the weight of the burden you're trying to shoulder? Can that trainee executor really hold Orin there? Orin's not taking this seriously, and Azel is an editorial hall executor right now. He's not actually an obstacle to Orin. Actually, guide, while I never would have go against your decision, I can't say I really agree with this. Cecilia should stay with the Pathfinders. It's not only for us, but for her sake too. That isn't my decision. I can't decide her fate. This is a decision that only Cecilia can make for herself. Pesha, perhaps we should call it an honor to show her the choices before her. Don't worry, what I must do remains the same. <sighs> Kid, for an executor in training, you are not bad. I'm still standing. Looking to spend some time in the hospital, huh? I'm not out here to break bones, though. You don't have to do this. You're just a normal guy living in L Lateran City. Go home and lead a happy life. Munch on, munch on some cake or take a sip of tea. Whatever. I've made up my mind already. You folks really like talking about choices and decisions, huh? Has it ever crossed your mind that there is a price to pay when you make decisions? This was only going to be an insurance policy, but, uh, well... Sorry, fellas. I need your help. 
We aren't here to help you, Oren. We are doing this because we think it's the right thing to do. <sighs> so what do you say? A wise man adapts himself to circumstances. Oh, that's a Yanis idiom. You see, it means... Too bad, Ezel. Ah. <sighs> Federico. Rainy Executor Isil Pastora, you're being temporarily recalled. You le your leave has been cancelled. Please assist me with this arrest. Oren Argiolas, your identity has been confirmed. The Seventh Tribunal has revoked your credentials of Legatus. Please stop resisting and proceed with me to the First Tribunal. Must I? I still have lots to lots of work to take care of. Yes, you must. That is a very cool picture, I love it. Alright, and moving on to stage 6 after battle story. The bell tower's corners are narrow and the stone steps below my feet are slippery and wet. The stone walls are rough and feel cold to the touch, just like the trees in... Oh, pardon, 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 I went ahead. Just like the trees in the for in that forest. My footsteps echo in the hallway. What is up ahead? I'm the child of a Sancta and a Sarkas. They all said that they have... They all said that they have on me there. I don't know. It was a word I've never heard. But I remember how Rosalia looked. She looked down at me with a smile on her face. Her hands were clasped together like she was holding onto a treasure. What did they... What did everyone want me to do? I still don't get it. But now I understand what it is that I should do the most and what it is that I want to do. It doesn't matter if I'm a Sancta or a Sarkas. I'm Cecilia. Just Cecilia. Goodbye, Mama. Will you keep watching over me? Isil, you're 11 o'clock. <sighs> that was close. Come on, it's not like we're fighting. Like fighting is going to get us anywhere. Why didn't why don't we call it quits? You really don't know how to listen, huh? Isel, I thought you were really worried about Cecilia. She might just be safer with me, you know? Did you think I'd believe that? I'm never one to lie. Even if you're telling the truth, if that isn't what Cecilia wants, then there is no way. Sometimes I really think Halloween's giving me way more than I bargained for. Huh? Stay focused, Isel. No, Federico. Can you feel it? Well, look at that. The air is trembling. As though something is manifesting from nothingness. A surge of power. Pure power. Nothing like any originium arts known to man. An ancient construction is being awakened. A forgotten sound is about to ring out far and wide. Isel, new directive. Investigate the bell tower. Leave the traitor's legatus to me. Your holiness, what's going on? Shh. Well, if seal off the, cath the central sanctuary and halt all meetings. What is happening? Hmm. Did you know? My predecessor, the last pope, had an interest in history. No. I don't blame you. He was an amateur in the field. His writings were riddled with mistakes and hardly worthy of praise. Rather than studying history, perhaps it's better to say that his interests lay in using history to let his imagination run wild. He was particularly fond of certain 
romantic metaphors in his writings. Perhaps a little promiscuous for a history paper, but they did truly leave an impression on his readers. He said, History is a musical movement written by a shapeless titan in countless voices. Going by his analogy, our titan musician seems to have started writing his next measure. I breathe all the air out of my lungs before drawing a fresh breath. I trip and fell to the ground before climbing back up and running forward again. I can feel that something is brewing. The other side of the door at the top of the bell tower is where Cecilia is. I open the door. The frail girl is singing. An ancient Sarkis folk song. She is singing from the bottom of her heart so tenderly with all her feelings. I can only stand there doing my best to hold my breath to avoid disrupting the flow of her singing. At a certain point I realize I cannot hear anything anymore. There is only the sound of bells seemingly ringing across time. Bells from the Tower of Revelations? That's impossible. That bell has never rung. Except... Except when... When the first saints still walked the land. Hmm. During the day, the center looked up the, at the sky to find darkness shrouding even the sun. At night, the devil's army came and slaughtered countless Santa. The center lost much of their radiance. The saints said, follow me. Thus they rose. The saints said, listen to me. Thus the bells began to ring. The bells echoed throughout the wilderness, uniting all the sancta. This is a revelation. This is an ex exhortation. There will be light throughout the day, and it shall never be shrouded again. The saint said, build a city, it will be the sancta's paradise. The saint said, this city shall be called Latara. How? The Tower of Revelations is one of the oldest structures in Laterano. No, according to the texts, the Tower of Revelations was one was here before there was a Laterano. And now the holy bells ring again. For our little Cecilia. But why? Perhaps the shapeless titan musician wanted some crescendos in his music, and he picked Lateran bells for his arrangements, because he liked the sound. Cardinal, Cardinal Velof, you and I stand in this church at this moment. I wonder if that is a good... if that is good or bad. Your Holiness, we must know immediately why the holy bells are ringing. No, no matter the reason, it is the responsibility of the church to explain why and how it happened. With envoys from the nations gathering, gathering in Laterano, all of the attending representatives are now witnesses to this event. This could be an opportunity. Go, Velov. Inform the envoys that the Lateran bells ring for the first time in millennia. And this pretends change. We must come together and prepare for the future. What about the Tower of Revelations, then? We have waited long enough. Let's get to work. Guy, did, did you know this was going to happen? What exactly is Cecilia? She's... she's mixed race, but is there some other secret behind her? No, of course not. She's the Cecilia that both you and I know. She may come from a unique background, but there is no secret to her. It's just that, perhaps Laterano itself, is thirsting for change, and Cecilia, she just so happened to be in the right place at the right time. Or perhaps she's actually the one who will end the thousand year conflict between the Sarkas and the Sancta. And so revelation came and the bells rang. 
Of course, it could also just be a misunderstanding, a coincidence, a kind of a black humor in the course of history. But we both know that the truth is never what's actually important. Hmm. No matter what, this is an opportunity. If I have to say, it might even be proof that we are actually blessed. The church is most likely putting all their attention on the envoy and the bell t be uh, and the Tower of Revelations right now. We'll pave that path forward for you. You need to only walk it. Anderin, the bells have started to ring. The bells belong to a child who is about to begin her journey. Oh? You sound very relaxed. You've made your decision. My decision has never changed. Even if you must give up, uh, give up everything? Even if I must give up everything. Is there any meaning in this? Meaning? Meaning does not exist for nothing. All our choices merely conceive it, mold it, and give it a chance to descend upon us. I get it now. I hope you'll find your peace. Pesha, what you just said goes against our original goal. All men are cornerstones, and the road that we lay are paved for those who follow us. I must see His Holiness right now! Good night, Talvadore. His Holiness is praying right now. No one can see him. But... Please, understand. An explosion? Probably another people's pranks. No, the explosion came from the Envoy's village. We must... We stopped uh, handing out approvals for explosive activities there. Gun Knight Tomodora, the Envoy's village is under attack, and there have been multiple fires and explosions all across the city. It's the Astray. They can't sit still now that they, the Holy Bells have sounded, can they? There are Gun Knights stationed in the Envoy's village, but after the ambush and the explosion started, the Envoy started demanding the Gun Knights to protect them. Understood. <sighs> Damn it, why now of all times? Cardinal Abelov. The bells of the Tower of Revelations are ringing. This is the holiest moment in Lateran history. We even get to share this with the first summit of Hades and the envoys of, the, of all the lands. How joyous. Yet the heretics' remnants are taking the opportunity to sow chaos. They plot to disrupt the conference and overshadow Lateranus' radiance. Gun Knight Talpadore, by order of the Apostle himself, the Pope, you are to go to the Envoy's village and defend them al alongside the Gun Knights there, thus ensuring the Summit of Nations will commence as planned. I will accompany you. Very well, Your Eminence, if I may. I'm sure you've noticed as much, but the energy that's surging from the Tower of Revelations... Watch your words, Rebird Gun Knight. That is glory itself. Like when did he do this? Maybe. You're still going to cover for him? Yometa, come here. What for? Come here. Hmm? Hmm? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that, but what I said the other day. Let go of me. Not until you forgive me. I am mad at you. But there is something else I'm angrier about. And it might just be me. I want you to trust me on one thing, Fiumena. If he really wanted to do harm to Laterano, I'd never forgive him. Then what, it, what is it that he's trying to do? Maybe he's just asking a question. Of who? His Holiness. And what is he asking him? A question that a sanctum must never ask. You can't be more specific. I'm not entirely sure myself, you see. This question has probably been bothering him deep in his mind for a long time. 
he hasn't even he hasn't ever told me about it. I've just got a hunch. But it's true. What happened eight years ago has something to do with this question. Wait, so Mustima, you knew about this? Of course not. I'm not Lemwin. She might understand him. Me though, uh, I don't think he was worthy, that's all. If you ask me, he's a poor little guy, and I have something more important to take care of. So, uh, let's leave it at that. How come it feels like you're ticking me off even more than Lemwin? You and I are different. I did everything I could, and you... I'm guessing you would have probably r rather it was me, right? Lemwin? What else do you know? Tell me. I thought you didn't want to hear any of it. I have to he here to find out. Hmm. Cecilia Laporta, by order of the Apostle himself, the Pope, I am here to protect you. Because the bell started ringing? Are they ringing because of me? I cannot say. Please, follow me to the Basilica at once. Hmm. It's okay, Mr. Izzo. Don't worry. Let's go. Alright then. And moving on to stage 7 story, titled Light and Shadow. He feels a ridiculous, unbearable angering. A vastly bewildering emptiness. Let's begin with the before story. <clears throat> the town feels so lively today. Is it because the conference is about to start? Maybe. There are explosions everywhere. Everyone's so excited. Hey, what the hell? Is that an executor and a legatus? What's going on? A parkour competition? That sounds like fun. Why don't you join in? <laughs> Let's go. See if we can catch up with them. <laughs> These fucking guys. <laughs> this should be far enough. one aren't you Federico as are you I thought you didn't have a mission aren't you practically on vacation I don't get it is there a reason you can't get off my case what did I ever d what did I ever do to offend you my last mission was in Syracuse to recover the personal effects of a local Sancta among them was a notebook in it he wrote that he once saw a female Sancta come into contact with the male Sarkas Alright, I can see why you'd look into that, but what does it have to do with me? I'm decidedly male, in case you can't tell. I followed all the leads I had and found the Sancta, Sancta Woman's address. 7 to via Tervatius, Pagus Tevonus. Hmm. And when you made it there, you found that she'd already passed away. That's correct. So you had no choice but to keep following her tracks, then you found she had been taking suspicious trips, and then she always contacted a specific legatus before she left on her journeys. <laughs> this is good. This is very good. And here I thought I gave myself away in Victoria, or left some evidence after I talked to Endoin. There would I have thought it was because I helped Peoria out of the goodness of my heart. This might just be some kind of fate. Are you done musing? Ah, Federico, if my hunch is correct, you probably can't feel what I'm feeling right now. Yes? No? Yes, and I do not care. The emotions of those I arrest are not my concern. Does that mean you care about the feelings of anyone you're not arresting? No. You and I are the same. Neither of us cares for empathy. That way, I, the way I see it, we could be great friends. Actually, I think... Lotorano could use more people like you. Someone who doesn't let their empathy get to them, always doing things by the book. 
I don't disagree. Perhaps I could pay you a visit in the penitentiary after your trial and we could discuss it more. Uh, shit, who is that supposed to be? So, that's your reason, Oren. Oh, right, right, right. Well, here comes the worst of my troubles. Why must an honest-to-god guy like me be blessed with such rotten luck? Good day, Cardinal Velov. Good day, Executor Federico. The Seventh Tribunal will handle the traitor from this point forward. The notorial hall's involvement is concluded. Please send a copy of your report of this matter to both the Seventh and First Tribunals. This is my authorization code. Confirmed. In accordance with all relevant relevant regulations. So, would you like to go back to your vacation or join me in arresting the astray? It's up to you. Well, has anyone ever heard Federico say goodbye to anyone? You can stop trying to cozy up to me. I thought you were here to help me. If you were here to arrest me, you could have waited until Federico was done, right? Of course, it's possible that he couldn't take me, but that uh, wouldn't mean you had to send him home, right? I simply realized that you might be more useful than I expected. When I read Federico's report, I thought you were just an Anduin's helping hand, but it looks like you're not as much of an imbecile as I thought. I'm honored. Cecilia's existence is a threat to Laterano. You don't want this threat to be wiped away, not because you want to see it executed, but because you want to use it to make a deal. It really makes my heart ache, you know. It's such a winefall. But no one's uh, trying to touch the pile of money. I'm the most faithful of Tulaterano a man can be, honestly. You know that, Valov. I'm his holiness's biggest supporter, his ideals, anyway. But you don't agree with the way he does things, correct? Like this conference, for example. You don't think there's any point to it? Hmm. And you think there is? Well, if, how much do you know about Victoria these days? You wouldn't understand just how close we are to war. And at a time like this, His Holiness puts up all political capital he accumulated over the last couple decades. But even though he managed to get most of the countries to bend, the envoys who showed up, they hardly have any weight. In more peaceful times, maybe we could use this as a foundation and slowly pave our way forward. But we don't live in peaceful times. There is no time for us to dilly-dally around if we actually want to see his ideas put into practice. I saw a lot of even dirtier moves in Victoria with my own eyes. I won't say it's the right way to do things, but if doing the right thing doesn't get us to the finish line... Tell me, would you rather be a woman of integrity? You know, you usually aren't this, this talkative in situations like these. What are you waiting for? Actually, I just changed my mind. Oh? After traveling out there for so long, I'm buying less and less into the idea that Sancta are special. We've got the empathy thing. We feel that what we feel. That's it. We just happened... Happened, though. Even I have to admit, I felt something ancient and primal, and it originated in my heart. Moreover, we got ourselves a trump card. All those envoys are gathered here in Otorano, and we are blessed with a miracle. What does that mean? What could it mean? There is still a lot for us to do, isn't there? I think you might be mistaken about one thing. You think there is no place for the Summit of Nations during troubled times? I suggest you look at this from, an, uh, from the other side. That said, I think you have the right idea about one point. There are certain things that His Holiness can't do himself, and I also don't think there's any harm in having a backup plan. You're a lucky man, Oren. I do have a use for you. Come out, Pesha. At least you still have some sense in you, and your circus friends are running around the city joining in on the commotion. If any of the envoys saw the circus actively sabotaging the summit of nations in Laterano, things wouldn't end, end nearly as well. What are you trying to say? Anduin is on his way to the Basilica, isn't he? What do you know about him? I've got no reason to tell you, Pesha. 
But before I got, go settle my score with him, I need you to stop the stupid annoying little... I need you to stop the stupid annoying little tricks. While your people might uh, still have some sense in you, and you aren't actually trying to sabotage the Summit of Nations. I'm warning you, don't push your luck. Things don't always uh, go the way we want them to. Oh, so now it's your turn to convince me. This is just a little advice. If you don't want to take it, that's no feathers of my plumage. <laughs> Fiametta, tell me, what are you thinking? What else could I be thinking? I'm doing my job. I'm settling the score. It's not that complicated. Why did you leave the Pontifica Chorus eight years ago? They don't get to leave the city. Only the Notoria Hall does. What's it matter? Why ask about that? I don't know what you're brooding about. Maybe you put your hopes on me for something, but I don't really get what your whole thing about Lutheran Oliberi is about. And I couldn't care less about it. A teammate, a trusted betrayed us. One of my friends got hurt because of it, and another got exiled. There might even be traitors who have eyes on them because of it. I made this mistake once, and I won't let it happen again. I'll protect him. It's as simple as that. And I'm not going to apologize if that uh, doesn't fit in any way with your fantasies. <laughs> Don't get cocky, Mustima. In the same position, wouldn't you do the same? You're right, I would. It's true, I've got a fantasy. But so what if it's a fantasy? Fantasies, ideals. If I don't chase the things I once believed in, I wouldn't have made it this far. Maybe I'm too naive to entrust others with my ideals, but I have no regrets. I don't get you. That's why I'm not, why I'm not going to back down. Even if everything I'm doing uh, seems stupid and annoying to you, it's my mission and I will see it through to the end. If you want to stop me, you'll have to take me down. Very well, Pesha. Alright, and moving on to the... After Battle story. <clears throat> That's enough, Pesha. It's not over. Pesha, right? Most of the Gun Knights have been reassigned to the Envoy's village. Your mission is over. I don't really get it, though. It's not like Anduin doesn't know who the most powerful guy in the Basilica is. Why the whole charade? He probably wanted to make sure he got an audience with His Holiness. Hmm. You were actually listening to Lemwin. This has nothing to do with that. He is free to settle his score. But it doesn't mean I'm letting him get away. Sure, shall we get going? Once we get Pesha settled in. Right. <clears throat> How should we face this revelation? These mysterious, indescribable moments, these ambiguous yet to be explained urges these undescribable esoteric intuitions where will it lead us what kind of choice does it want us to make or perhaps this is merely a hallucination caused by the fatigue of life but revelation is called as such only because we willingly believe it or uh, were told to believe in it we could even say that if we knew it to be absolutely temporal, even if we deconstructed it into ice-cold objective logic. Regrettably, man will still shine a spiritual light upon revelation. Thus, when this cruel reality befall befalls us, the cowards can point fingers at the ambiguity of the revelation, while the devout can repent their insufficient understanding. In any case, we can at, ver at the very least are certain that we ourselves are not the root cause of everything. Ah, oh, Anduin, I was expecting you. 
you don't seem surprised at all. I can't say this was the result of any particular manipulation. The greatest lesson that I've learned in life is that people always cross paths, no matter their intuition. But in the end, we all have our goals. The Guardian, Keeper, and Executor of the Most Supreme Law. The eleventh man to take the name Evangelista, the patron saint of sacrifice and unity, and to stand atop the Lateran Curia as the Apostle, His Holiness the Pope. Why recite all these titles you do not believe in? The girl does not remain in your grasp. She is still young, there is still much for her to experience. Yet we are old, so old that we know our way around conspiracy, political machination and internal strife. What will you do now? Will you use this fine gift you spent decades preparing on her? I am not foolish enough to stand in a young girl's way, even if the struggle, even if she triggered some kind of miracle. No, this miracle is Lateranus. It belongs to the Laterano. God's grace has fallen upon us. There is nothing more to it. Do you enjoy history? I love history. For history to become history, you generally need an origin point, and when some kind of variable is introduced to stir up the water and form ripples, those ripples are history. What of the object that was thrown into the water in the first place then? Perhaps history does not care about it. And neither do I. The girl called Cecilia will go where she wants and do what she wants. Some day in the future perhaps the name Cecilia will be known far and wide. It could also remain forever in obscurity. But then the... Uh, mm -mm. But that has nothing to do with you or me. It has nothing to do with the both of us. We have a mutual understanding regarding that, do we not? You make yourself sound like a kind grandfather sending his granddaughter away. This is nothing more than you getting what it is that you seek. You now get to explain this miracle. In exchange, Cecilia earned the right to leave this place. This cannot even be called a trade. She never had the right to choose. No, I never wanted to do anything to her. But the Rano has stood for millennia, and neither should I nor shall it ever waver for a mere mixed blood child. I only hope that the apostles before and after you feel the same way, and that those expunged names were not erased for nothing. We cannot ask for too much. Sins shall always be sins, only time can wear them down, and it wears them down to the point that no one remembers where they once remembers they were once sins. I cannot cast blame on our forebears' cautiousness. However, neither shall I accept those sins in order to cover them up. So long as our mutual understanding stands, I am right. Hmm. As I said, it is very boring to grow old. Thanks to all the things that we experienced in the past, we, we are always fearful. On the fence with just about everything. The old don't have the luxury of possibility and doing. We have no choice but to continue down the path that was already laid. A path that was already laid. That goes for you too. I know of your journey. My journey. Right, I once journeyed, and I heard the purest of prayers and the most vicious of curses. I stopped into sumptuous palaces and plucked my shoes out of bloodstains. I saw shameless sinners beg for mercy, and I closed the simplest of caskets on innocent children. It was always the same, their cries always died down and their tears always dried up, and I always stood there with right next to them, attempting to comfort them. I told them that salvation would come, as long as we believed. But no, nothing ever happened. 
not even the briefest passing glance. The homey city of Laterano has weathered every storm that came its way. How would a saint sitting in his soft armchair and the sancta that know only to sing the praises of their own dignity know that there exists hardship in the lands beyond? All the hopeless penances, withered consolations and deafening silences. Do you know how heavy silence weighs on my heart? I seek only an answer. We will never find salvation, will we? Salvation. I often hear this word from the faithful as though a sort of incomprehensible ascendance, as though an ark that will rescue all the drowning. Behold our grand and glorious Lateran city. It is so splendid and magnificent, solemn and refined, with a perpetual aroma of vanilla and sugar wafting in its air. As of this, all of this is a reward for abiding by the laws. All of this is our proof of salvation. Yet this paradise is only a paradise because of the harshness of the beast beyond. We could have been a star in the barren lands, a torch in the cold night. Don't you dare say I'm wrong. Lotharano is not some ancient concept that floats only in scripture. It stands right here and now. Lotharano can save everyone. She cannot. And why is that? Because we are only us. Because we are the Sancta of Lotharano. And they are not us. They. They conceal. They become disillusioned. They consigned. They become disappointed. They struggle and they hate. They themselves mold and shape their own enemies. Mold and shape their own enemies. A man-eating monster of both lust and disgrace. With the flames of destruction hidden in its heart. Why do you think these lands have been countless? Seen countless dynasties and nations come and go in the flames of war while the miraculous Laterano has withstood the test of time? Anduin, they are Inferno itself. And you... You choose to leave us. You left behind the virtues, the shapes that shape us under the stubborn belief that your water could extinguish the flames of inferno, that your candle could illuminate the night. Why seek and my an why seek my answer? You chose despair for yourself long ago. Three times have I visited Laterano. For the rest of my life I wandered the lands beyond. I've met many men and women, and I do not need the Lateran Pope to tell me how dark their hearts can get. Yet there is also a ray of light in them, a radiant, blinding light that I can never forget. That I will never forget. I was set ablaze by the light. Perhaps the fire is destined to be extinguished the moment it is first lit, but I could never again return to the... Uh, eternally radiant Laterano. Yet this perpetual radiance is cold and distant. Laterano's light shines on only a select few, and it, its might exists only to project this image of fabricated glory. In that case, I would rather be the torch that burns by the feet of those who are freezing to death, even if its flames will soon be extinguished. Anduin, flames are destined to be extinguished. You seek to turn this perpetual light into a flame, and the flame will meet its fate one day. When that happens, there will be no more light, not even a cold and distant one. If you shatter the twin moons in the sky, the those struggling in the cold night will do so in darkness. Left only to close their eyes, light will ultimately become a fantasy, a lie of a dream. Would you call eternal night a kindness? You despise the small size of this paradise. But do you know how hard it is for a small paradise to to upon these lands? You scorn its small size, but have you ever considered that there are those who try to live an honest life? What right do you have to turn this paradise to tinder for that wildfire of yours destined to be put out? These words of 
This world is hostile to beauty. To allow this beauty to persist forever, you do know... Do you know how much the Lateran people, countless Laterans, generations of Laterans, have had to sacrifice? Andun, who are you to so, to so handily deny all this with a few trivial words? Preposterous. There are those trying to live an honest life in Laterano, but those that somehow make the lives of those outside any less real. They hold out hope despite their hardships. They follow the scriptures and the laws. They believe that they can change their lives, and they look forward to the reward for their hard work. Miss Bellion from the Rock Salt and Sundry Store, Deacon Landy of the Tidal Chapel, Little Sag Sagri, who ties the ropes of the bells. Tell me, is there anything wrong with their faith, with their hope? Tell me, O oh great and glorious Apostle, Pope Evangelista XI, the great protector of our paradise and defender, defender of history, why did Rocamarea deserve to be destroyed? Answers. Questions. So this is the answer that I sought. So this is the question that I wanted to ask. Something has come loose. Something that once had me tied up for so long. Something is roaring, struggling. Yet I feel only, e only at ease. As though I'm bathing under the saliferous sunlight. The gunshots rang out almost at the same time. The law is carved into each sancta's flesh and blood, and one must pay a price to break it. I knew that. There is a bottomless abyss beneath my feet. I've taken that step already. A great force slams me into the wall, and the sculptured relief presses into my bones. Relief, pardon. With the state statue behind me crumbling to the ground. There is no question that it was the strength of a patron firearm. Though Evangelist Eleven's body is old and frail, he is far stronger than he seems. However, I try my best to open my eyes and make out his figure among the smoke and dust. The old man is still standing in the middle of the basilica, but there is no longer a smile on his face. He looks even older than he did when I stopped, stepped into this place. But a halo above his head shines as bright as ever. The law in, law in our flesh and blood, the painful price to pay. Price? Then I realized what the real question here is. The halo above my head is not glowing any darker than it used to. I see. Both you and I came out of this unscathed. What a surprise. It's worthy of celebration, though. I was prepared to pay the price. You're a pious follower, Andoin. Perhaps that is because you were not born in Laterano. In Laterano, we don't believe in our faith, do we? We live as part of faith itself. We, Sancta, have been in uh, have its prisoners ever since the very moment the halos above our heads started to glow. It. What exactly is this law that we, the Sancta, believe in? What exactly does it mean to fall? Throughout Lotharano's long history, each apostle's ha apostle has had the authority to interpret the commandments and drive from them new rules and decrees even placing them above all others. Lotharano is built upon this law. All Sancta know, violate the rules, the commandments, or the laws, and you must pay the price. The fallen Sancta are no longer connected to all other Sancta. Their patron firearms reject them. Fallen Sancta are no longer Sancta. 
What is a Sancta? A Sancta cannot point his firearm at another Sancta. That is a commandment, and it is also our instinct. Just like how a man cannot bring himself to take a step forward off the edge of a cliff. Of course, there are others who can, and it seems to me you have more than earned the right to speak to that end. Hmm. What makes me different from her? I told you the commandments are instinct, and I told you the commandments are interpreted. Surely a man of your intellect can tell those statements are mutually exclusive. It was constant than the interpretations that were added over time throughout our ever-changing history could never have been instinct. Correct, but you are ca uh, calling the wrong premise into question. The law is, natural, const is, an, is naturally constant, but our interpretation is nearly as ever-changing as you are making it seem. Interpretation isn't a coincidence, Anduin. Do you understand? You said the old don't have the luxury of possibility. The law is much older than either of us. The apostle does not interpret the law, the law interprets itself. Why do you think the law is capable of this? Take a look at these. Oh, my apologies, I made such a mess here. These structures, statues, stained glass, the exquisite domes and frescoes all around us. Do they seem like they have constructed a particular illusion for us? Do you recall their revelation? If we knew it be to be absolutely temporal, even if we deconstructed it into ice-cold objective logic. Regrettably, man will still shine a spiritual light on it. Hmm. There has only ever been one true law. We are to continue our existence. Who are we? Follow me. I follow the old man into the depths. Everyone knows that the saints of old are buried under the basilica. They are the most knowledgeable and outstanding men and women in Atlerano's long history. Their brilliant marble statues have no eyes, rendering them blind to, who, to those who pass by. We head down. Stella recounting the achievements of the past popes line our path. Among them were the consited, the noble, and perhaps even the crazed. But not a single one of them ever allowed Lateran to be besmirched. Now they stand here in silence. We head down. This is where the oldest of, of saints lie. They were the ones who plucked the Sancta out of chaos. They were the, the embodiment of all the virtues of mankind. All those who came after merely imitated them. The nameplates of which their miracles are described are dim and lightless. We head down. I do not know where I am. For as far as my eyes can see, Nothing here has ever been mentioned in any text or literature. I cannot understand any of this. This should not be part of Laterano. A low humming sound fills the entire space around us. Strangely, I find myself flustered by all this. It is not the answer that I sought. It is not something man is capable of establishing or interpreting. It is not something that interpretation, analysis, debates, or reforms could influence. It is not a matter of whether or not you believe in it, why you believe in it, or how you believe in it. I would like to point out here that IT is spelled with a capital I. After all, this is an indisputable existence. In such a manner, it exists. What is Laterano? What are Sancta? 
I see. We are us only because it links us all together. It molds us. It is the criterion upon which all things are based. The path you and I follow was paved by law. The paths you and I have trodden both lead to the same destination. It allows you and I to continue making our way forward. This is the path it has deemed as correct. Alright, quick break for me. Hold on. Okay, that was a nice little tea break. Get the voice back under control. Right, let's continue. With Stage 8's story, titled Shadow and Ash. When accumulated obsessions and the past's burning fury collide, he comes to an answer. So, let's begin. Oh, <clears throat> before we do this one, uh, there will be two whole phrases being said completely in Latin. Uh, in I think it's in the before part, if I remember correctly. Yeah, in the before part. Uh, I know roughly what they mean. I had to go through a bit to figure out what they mean because there are like a ton of a ton of different interpretations. But um, I'll give you what they mean after uh, this whole before scene is completed. Okay, <clears throat> so I don't interrupt the flow of the scenes. So yeah, let's begin with the before part. <clears throat> it was a small Iberia, Iberian town, one that you can't even find on a map or in history books. When people still lived there, it was called Rocamarea. <clears throat> the bishop of Rocamarea raised a young Sancta, a Sancta growing up here, learning here, and enjoying life to the fullest. This was a humble and barren place, but well suited for the asceticism. As, asceticism, whatever, of a pious life. Except after the profound, after the profound silence, life in Iberia was always fragile, no matter how hard people worked. One plague, one famine, or one pre-mediated infiltration was all it took to bring everything crashing down. To save the hometown that, at the same time, was not his hometown, the Sancta arrived in the holy city of Laterano to ask for any amount of support. The answer he received was simple. You are one of us, but they are not. When the Sancta returned to Iberia, that hometown had disappeared. Everything had been completely smoothed over, erased, as if it never existed at all. Like a grain of sand disappearing into the desert, or a drop of water dissolving into the tide. After a long journey, the Sancta returned to Laterano, an emaciated lost soul. He went to the chapel to seek a canonized bishop in search of answers or guidance, but even the canonists could only remain silent in the face of such great doubt. On the pew he sat, remaining there from dawn to dusk. Fiumeda. That was the first time I met Anduin. Forget it. I'll pay for it myself. The repairs here cost too much. We'll just have to cut back on the afternoon tea and sweets. Your Holiness, I heard the sound of a fight coming from the Basilica. Are you alright? What? You were attacked by heretics. I'm sorry, I failed my duties. Fret not, Paolario. 
you did you forget who won the Basilica's last arm wrestling tournament? You did. I was just exercising my wrist a bit and ended up causing a bit of an accident. The unrest within the city has already subsided. Yes, they dispersed. I didn't even get a chance to grill. Excuse me, can I come in? <clears throat> my apologies. Your Holiness, I'm making a fool of myself. What I meant was, the one you asked uh, for, the ones you asked for are here. Please, come in, my children. Salutations, Your Holiness. Good day, Your Holiness. I am Cecilia. Ah, welcome. You'll have to forgive me for the mess here. As for you two... What sweets do you like with tea? Do you need me to make something? Hmm, let me think. <laughs> Maybe add a few cubes of sugar into your teacup. Isel, perhaps you should add a few more. Some sweetness will mellow out your nerves. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Your Holiness, if I wanted to leave Laterano, would you let me go? If I said no, would you obey me? Maybe not. Then go. Uh, Your Holiness. I'm just a poor old man whose greatest wish is to spend the rest of his life in a soft reckoning chair. <laughs> reckoning? Rocking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> How could I muster the effort to manage a young girl's travel plans? But Cecilia is... Is what? Do you still think she's some hybrid of an angel and devil? A saint who will usher in the revolution? <laughs> Cecilia is just a little girl who wants to go outside and see the world, is she not? Hmm. You're still carrying your mama's guardian gun, right? Ah, uh, um, sorry, should I leave it with Mr. Ezel? But... It's fine, my child. The acquisition of a patron firearm is a solemn affair. It is supposed to be required... It's, it is supposed to require a grand ceremony, the presence of a guardian, the approval of a mentor, as well as lots of troublesome paperwork. But you aren't even of age to obtain a guardian gun, so just take it with you quietly. Is that really okay? I wouldn't dare say call this my boon to you. Each and every gun is a valuable asset to Laterano. But if this is the oh, uh, only keepsake a child has of her mother, I'm sure no one could oppose that. Take it with you, my child. You may not have the physical ability to pull the trigger and take out a bad guy, but it will always remind you that wherever you go, your journey begins in Laterano. Okay, thank you, Your Holiness. Isel, go with her. Call it a long-term field mission. Just remember to stop by every now and then. Hmm. Do I really have the right to do that? Of course you do. Is this not the choice that you made? I will do everything in my power to fulfill this mission. Look after Cecilia well. Alright. Now be on your way. Time waits for no man. When you get to be my age, all you think about is taking your next nap. Mr. Pope, I promise to follow this path to the very end. Oh? In that case, I will pray for you. <clears throat> your Holiness, are you satisfied with this outcome? I got to enjoy some sweets with them. I am satisfied with that. The man has left just as you instructed. Should I have kept him around a bit longer? Maybe a piece of chocolate would have cheered him up. Your holiness, you're too soft-hearted. No, well, if the dream of becoming torches in the cold night is doomed to failure. For all of us. But serving a functionary... Uh, S serving a functionary a hot cup of tea. That's something we can always do. This world is hostile to beauty. 
May those who reject this aphorism find success. It is time for us to move on to our next task as well. Now that the riots have subsided, let's convene the foreign envoys. The revelation is clear. I will do what I must. <clears throat> I often think back on what happened that night. At first, it was just an ordinary cleanup mission, just another group of Sarkas raiders. We tracked them down as they made their escape and came upon their place. Unusual, but there were no signs of hostility. Only traces of those men locked in their own time. I received that emergency request for aid. I left you. I abandoned you. The distress signal wasn't from very far away. The round trip would be half a day at most. I even rushed back early. I remember the model texture of the tiles under my feet. I remember this sensation of cold rain falling on my face. I remember your black horns and your tightly closed eyes. And Anduin, who had gone missing. But it was just a cleanup mission. It was just another cleanup mission. Why did it have to happen like that? Where did it all go wrong? If I had never left, if I'd stayed there, if I had been with you, would none of that have happened? At least, at least it wouldn't have been. But by that time I arrived, everyone was set in stone. It couldn't be undone. It's an awful feeling. Truly unbearably awful. That the only thing I could do was watch. I should should have been there to shoulder the burden alongside all of you. <clears throat> That's not true, Fiamera. You don't have to shoulder anyone's burden. No, that is my choice. I don't care what power he was lusting after, what secrets he was trying to uncover, what answers he was trying to find. I don't care about his ideals, his lofty causes, who he redeemed or who he guided. I will not forgive him, not because of my beliefs, not because of Laterano, not because of the Pontifica Chorus, and not even the time that I've lost. I will not forgive him because... Anduin, you betrayed the people who trusted you. My old friends. How come you're here in one piece? How come even His Holiness can't? How come? How come you're asking me that again? The path was never there in the first place. What good does it do groping around in the nothingness? Is that your penitence? Penitence? No, I have nothing to repent. Where can I repent? There is no light, no path. Those who suffer must continue to suffer. Those who grieve must continue to grieve. There is no salvation, no paradise. This is Laterano, and it is the only thing that belongs to us. If the light has always been a lie, no, not a lie. It's real, but not as we wished. There has never been a light, let alone illumination. What are you blabbling on about, Anduin? Have I given up? Why would I be here if I had given up? With a barrier this thick, how am I supposed to embrace them? How am I supposed to embrace them? Maybe I am nothing more than a swindler peddling false hope, who deceived myself into believing it. I don't understand. What is its judgment? Where does it want me to go? Its very presence has already blocked my path. Where shall I find my path? Anduin, wake up! Look who's standing in front of you! Ah, uh, Fiametta. Why are you losing your mind again? Where did you hone your tongue? Where did your honey tongue go, your righteous heir? Have you lost your spine? How am I supposed to convince a human husk of a madman? Take a look at who's standing in front of you! I'm in Laterano, Fiametta. 
I am above the Basilica. I'm glad to see you all again. No, I'm not glad at all. Are you trying to get in the way? You still dare to get in my way? Apologize, Anduin. Right now, get on your knees and apologize to Mustinma and Lemwin. Do you think you did nothing wrong? I have made countless mistakes. You're, st <clears throat> You're still pretty damned smug, aren't you? God forbid. Listen up, Anduin. I don't give a damn what your beliefs are, nor do I care if your beliefs have gone to shit. Lemon forgave you, Mustima forgave you, Evangelista Eleventh forgave you, even if all of Laterano forgives you. I will not. I am so so I am so sorry, Fia Madam. I am not the one you should apologize to. If I had the chance, I'd probably do the same thing all over again. Are you for real? You'd say that in front of Fiametta. And right now you're not... Very good, Anduin. Take out your gun. You know that won't accomplish anything. You... <clears throat> you think I care about accomplishing something? I and Malam Krukum think that if it kill you right here, Lumen gets uh, eight years of her life back, or that Mastima gets the whole rest of hers, Pedicabo ego te et irumabo, accomplishing something. I want revenge for the sake of getting my goddamn revenge. Do you get that, Anduin? Are you so completely. <clears throat> Jesus. Are you so completely obsessed, Fiamera? So what if I am? I'll say it one more time, Anduin. Take out your gun. Okay, so, <clears throat> the first thing she said to him, uh, hold on, I have it somewhere written down. So, I in Malam Krukum, well, apparently the closest I can find and most appropriate considering where they are, would be, um, to go and crucify yourself or I will crucify you. Something along those lines. But the second one... <laughs> Uh, the second one, I guess what she meant with that at that moment is that she's gonna shove the gun up his ass and then down his throat. Because the closest sentence I could find that would be the most appropriate translation is a translation of a poem that sounds very similar but has one extra word in there. And the translation that I saw for that was literally... <sighs> Jesus Christ. Uh, literally... I will F you in the ass and then uh, splurge down your throat. Let me put it that way. That was the full translation, but it had an extra word in there, so... The closest I could compile out of what, what is being said in uh, Freddy Cabo, blah blah blah, is... Uh, potentially, she's just telling him she's gonna shove the gun up his ass and then uh, down his throat. Yep. I love her. She's great. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Alright, before we go continue, usually when it comes to these bosses, I keep forgetting what I should do this very thing here. Because they have lore on them. It says here for Anduin, the Martyr. A Senta who made an enemy of Laterano for the sake of asking a question. A Pathfinder who threaded the path of peril for the sake of receiving an answer. He feels neither wrath nor sorrow. He neither curses God nor beseeches man. Anduin only follows his own path, wherever it may end. And uh, now we can go to the after stage story. <clears throat> obsession, is it? This is your obsession. What's wrong with a little obsession? 
I don't care if it's irrational, meaningless, or futile. When I wake up my mind to do, s when I make up my mind to do something, I do it. What do you think we fight? Why do you think we fight? Those empty platitudes of yours. Did you think they weren't a form of obsession too? Why are each of us here, if not for our own obsessions? A shot rings out. However, the target was not Anduin. Before he realizes it, his gun had left his hand. But he feels at ease, for his gun will forever remain in Latarano. He may never say it, but how can anyone help but love Latarano? Those peaceful days, those joyous times, those happy moments. But because of his love, he has had regrets, guilt, shame, and doubts. He may never become a true Lateran, but in this moment, when he thinks about his gun staying here forever, at this very moment, under the glare of the faces looking at him, a kind of peace floats to the surface like a bubble, then pops. He walks 10,000 miles on the path of fate and doubt, from one path to the next. He thought he was wandering the wilderness, far from his roots. But perhaps this was not true. In more ways than one, he whispered a word of gratitude. No one will ever hear it, not in the past, present or future. But it was enough. Finally, I thought maybe you had dozed off. Come on, cut me some slack. It's hard finding a good stepping vantage point. This is it, Anduin. Hands up. Here, out of obsession. Watch out! How does he still have enough strength left for arts? How could one find salvation alone? No, not salvation, but a life with dignity. You come before me because of your sense of justice, and I arrived here because of mine. It comes to myth, to obsession. To the ultimately futile crossing, the path was always beneath my feet. Why do we place our hopes on salvation? What we have done is not for the sake of salvation, but to save ourselves. Have you come to your senses, Anduin? Then look at me. Look me in the eye. I felt like I was shooting at that target dummy. I'll walk my own path, whether this is my mission or not. I must thank you, thank you, Fiametta. You're welcome. I'll be sure to tell your friends about this epiphany at your funeral. As for right now, you're... I'm afraid it's not time. It's not yet time for that. I still have use for him. Someone blew up one of the support beams. We need to go. Who the... The explosion was approved. I personally submitted the application and stamped it myself. Oren, why you... <laughs> what are you doing, Oren? Is this what you came to do? Welp, cat's out of the bag. Go, and I'll find you later. Hmm. Fiumera, Mustima, perhaps we'll meet again. Wheresoever that may be, let us hold onto our obsessions. For as you say, they are why we exist. Please, miss, I must ask you to come down from the signboard. I'll have to call the guards if you don't comply. But while we're at it, I just have to know. How on Terra did you get up on there with a the wheelchair? Where there's a will, there's a way. That dust cloud, another explosion. There's been too many of those lately. It's starting to seem like a fireworks show than a conf more than a conference. Um, excuse me, could you give me a hand? Sometimes it's easier to get up than to get down. <laughs> Fucking signpost. Hey, wheelchair? <clears throat> you 
must be joking. What is wrong with Lauren's crisis management? That explosion damaged my collection. I demand an explanation. The Lauren bells are ringing for the first time in a thousand years. Was this prepared by his holiness as a special welcoming for us? Being with your parents is too much to bear. If not for my respect for his holiness, I'd... Tell the cook to prepare dinner or refuse to attend another Lauren banquet. Can't these people really bring change? Most of them are opportunists at best. Yes, this is something that only Laterano can do. Laterano, the city of miracles, forever fair and just. Your holiness, I will pray for us. Rare to see you so nervous, Velov. I'm too old for parlor tricks. All I can do is keep walking as far as I can. Your holiness, the broadcast is ready. Thank you. Let my words and deeds honor my name and title. <laughs> Greetings, honored guests. I am Evangelista the Eleventh, and I welcome you on behalf of Laterano. We are facing a great challenge, one that threatens not just Laterano, but all nations across Terra. As you know, our centuries are built on the backs of nomadic cities. Centuries, countries. Indeed, the advent of such cities established the very concept of the modern nation-state. In the past, the state was simply a gathering of people of similar lifestyles, huddled together for safety in the face of catastrophe. National borders were simply whatever lay within their sights. This all changed with the birth of nomadic cities. As is the human condition, conflict began to arise as these states interacted with each other. Perhaps even the word conflict is an understatement. I saw the fall of Gaul with my own eyes. The capital of the world fell overnight, armored battleships went silent, and the old vanguard of Gaul was reduced to ash. But it was more than Gaul that fell that night, it was the fall of civilization itself. All the might of the Gaulish Emperor and his legions could not save an empire that once stood proudly as the center of all lands. What then could possibly preserve our civilization that the people of Terra have painstakingly built piece by piece under the dark cloud of catastrophe? Laterano gave much for the war that engulfed the entire continent. Our messengers crossed both the wilderness and the royal courts, building Lotharano's reputation. The Sancta heard your calls for peace. But our lands had seen too many shades of this so-called peace, pouring in the dark corners of castles, palaces, and tents. We've seen the birth of secrets meant only to benefit a select few that lie in wait to undermine peace and order when least expected. The old wars of conquest may be a distant memory, but in their place we have tacit understandings and secret dealings that determine the fates of lives and nations from our out of sight. Today, though, revelation has come. It is my hope that the process of building peace be transparent from the very start, that we will all reject secret agreements between the few. There are questions that anyone who does not cling to the past, anyone who is concerned about the future of this land, should be asking. How do we ensure the survival of civilization? How many people are endangered when peace is threatened? What does safety for one country mean for the safety of other countries? Civilization is key to survival. Peace is something to be shared with others, not hoarded for oneself. As such, I call for the establishment of an accord of mutual assurance between nations. We have far more common interest than, may, than many would imagine. Terra must stand together or fall together. The Evangelist XI's speech on March 18, 1099 later known as the Lateran Declaration, is quoted on the first page of every edition of the International Summit Handbook. Uh, 
All right then, and we are finishing this off with the epilogue to the story, titled Iris. It says here, the iris fields outside the Ecclesia Requientum are gentle in the breeze. They rustle, they rustle like a farewell, like soft song. I was treating this like a holiday in Lanternado. Never thought something like this would happen. Kerak is a theocracy too, so why couldn't we have done this? Lanternado is much more influential. The Legati were all part of the Apostles' plan. We simply don't have that sort of foundation. Influence, huh? It's only after leaving Kerak that I learned how troublesome influence can be. Pretty amazing how Enciodis managed, managed to negotiate with other neighboring countries all on his own. The Saintess' influence is on the rise too. We have our own advantages. But do you really think what the Lateran Pope is talking about is possible? I don't know. I can't imagine a world where all the nations are so tightly entwined with one another. It sounds like a dream, or maybe a nightmare. But no one can ignore the miracles that happened that, uh, that day, or the Pope's speech. Is Latervano really the blessed city? What do the Sancta think of all of this, Isil? Huh? Uh, well, we, uh... It was stunning? Figured as much. Apparently that bell has not rung for thousands of years. So what will happen to Latervano now? Perhaps not all that much, from what I know of the Laterans. Or maybe it's the same everywhere. Turning points in history don't always seem so important at the time. But we do perceive that change is happening and we'll take up our own duties and responsibilities. <laughs> well said, brother. You can leave us here. We have a car on the way. Thank you. No problem. Cardinal Belov is at the hospital of not far from here. I'll be reporting back to her directly. Please give her our thanks. As long as you're still you're satisfied, those were her instructions. Nothing gets past her, huh? Say, can you take a photo of me and my husband? Sure. These two are so cute. Ah! <clears throat> How is that? You're a pretty good photographer. Thanks. You're welcome. Say, Piametta, do you feel like your steps are heavier than usual? Where is this coming from? You don't feel a weight on your shoulders after what His Holiness said. Get to the point. Uh, well, I'm thinking I'm due to a career change. I'm not really cut out for a job with such uh, too much responsibility. And you seem like just a, uh, just a girl to take my... in your dreams. Good afternoon. Long time to see, Azel. It's only been two weeks. Are you on a mission? An errand on behalf of Cardinal Velov. I was just about to report back to her. This is my final task in Laterano. Not bad. Once you've seen the world, you'll realize how boring this place is. There aren't as many great disasters, uh, des deserts out there, but life is about more than just enjoyment, don't you think? So you've got to meet with. So you're going to meet with Relif. Where is she? Savona Central Hospital. Hmm. <laughs> Let's go together then. We are headed the same way. <laughs> have you made up your mind? Yes, I have. I thought you needed to mull it over a little longer. I just felt that I can't be the only one standing still. While everyone else has already taken the next step. Then I have nothing to add. I'm glad you accepted. It's wonderful to have someone like you join us. Um, times being what they are. I knew you'd be here, Velv. How did you... We ran into Izzel. The emissaries from Kierag have reached their destination. Good work. But don't leave just yet. I've got another task I could use your presence for. 
Understood. See you next week, Lemwin. See you. Have you decided to join the Seventh Tribunal, Lemwin? Already on the job. Hmm. It won't be easy over there, after this conference. Don't you think we are a match made in heaven, though? I suppose. You've all chosen your paths. It's about time for me to think about what I can do, too. Speaking of, I was just talking to Fiametta about quitting my job as a legata. Too much trouble? I mean, with the old man? I can already see the trouble waiting in the future. But you're not getting away that easily, Mustima. Your answer, your answer to me now. Oh. <laughs> Here's your first job. Bring this letter to L. Can I say no? Nope. Deliver it to her personally. <sighs> Unemployment is sounding more appealing by the second. <coughs> <coughs> Quit it with the lame excuses. And there's my old taskmaster. He won't give up. How can you be so sure? Don't pretend that you don't need this job. You're looking for an answer, aren't you? I'm not Anduin. I didn't say you were. But you have a choice to make about who you are. And to find that answer, one must have journeyed for far enough. So, how does it feel to be seen right through, Mustima? Sounds like you've done even. So, sounds like you don't even need a halo to. That is my own path, then. You shouldn't follow me, Fiametta. You think the world revolves around you? We just happen to be taking the same road. I have his gun. If he still sees himself as a Sancta, he'll be back for it. Then he'll pay for what he did. And you'll help me. Fine. By the way, the answer that we were caught in the city had been set free. Is that His Holiness's will? Uh huh. His mercy is none of my business. I thought you might say something like that. Oh, and you'll be dispatched to Rhode Island under the agreement with the Notorial Hall through the through the Fifth Tribunal. Uh, you mean the pharmaceutical company that Mustima and Lemon were part time at? Uh, Lemuel, Lemuel, <clears throat> and uh, while I'm at it, Lemuel is the full name of um, someone we all know as uh, Excusia. Excusi, I? Fuck it, I'll, I'll call her Exia. I keep calling her Exia. I'll ca keep calling her Exia. Anyway, <clears throat> where's this coming from? Bellet wants to de deepen our cooperation. You're as good as anyone for the role. Plus, we have a good track record with them. You should be well supported. Alright. Oh, by the way, I have some really good news for you. You get to choose from one of three code names for your next mission. Do we really have to keep this farce, now that you're our liaison? We only use a temporary name in the first place because there's no clear role for keeping tabs on her. I've had enough of these monthly name changes. Don't you like... Didn't you like Shimmering Vigil? What was it that you said? They finally came up with a decent name? Shut up. Hey, nice flowers. I hate to break it to you, but tradition but the tradition of changing your title has become a rule unto itself. Just accept it. Here are your choices. Void <laughs> Void Gourmet, Wasteland Pilot, or Dawn Destroyer. <sighs> Dawn Destroyer. <laughs> Man. Your tastes are so easy to guess. I told you to shut up already. <sighs> You're awake. Luck has really not been on my side lately. What's wrong? Getting uh, bad sores from uh, too much lying down? No, forget I said anything. Huh? Izzel? I wanted him to see what happens to those who come close to betraying Laterano. Uh, stop bullying the kid, Beliv. Are you implying that I'm not young myself? Sorry. You're no longer a legatus. If that's the price I must pay, then... But you're still my subordinate. It's a heavy one. You'll talk... 
You talk a big talk, Orin. Let's see what you learned in Victoria. Doesn't mean you need me to do things my way. Remember the question you asked? I can answer it now. I have no interest in being a woman of integrity. But I respect those who have worked hard to earn the title. Well, I can't argue with that. Was that intended for me as well? Of course! Treasure the opportunity you, uh, you've been given with Cecilia. Don't ever let me know what influence she will have on Laterano. You don't want her returning here. If I didn't, why would I waste my time crafting an identity for her? Other than, well, compassion. And the fact that she still has potential value that outweighs her risks. Hmm. Trust me, there's no harm in getting this sort of candid promise. I understand. No need to be so nervous, I'm simply expressing Laterano's sincerity. If you do ever get tired of traveling, Laterano will be here. Her doors will be open. Come in. Federico. Cardinal Velev, here are the past two years, uh, years of records regarding the activities of the former Legatus Oren Argiolas. Thank you, Executor Federico. Um... Just in case. There is reason to believe that Executor Richelle may be his accomplice. Should I summon him? No need. He'll only claim to have been tricked by an old classmate. Now won't he, Oren? <sighs> Remind me to never pick a fight with you again. I'll let Richelle be, for now. But I would like to speak with him through you, when it's convenient. You don't have a problem with that, do you? Uh, no, not at all. Then the two of them have been dealt with for the moment, Executor Federico. Hmm. Oh, uh, hold on, Federico. What is it? I've been thinking. I couldn't have been easy to deduce that it was Feoria who met with the Sarkas, just for um, a few sentences in the journal. Why were you so obsessed? Why were you... What, who were you seeking? Arturia. Arturia, huh? Arturia? The wanted criminal? What exactly is your relationship with her? A distant relative. <laughs> Seriously, man. If I could stand right now, I'd be dragging you to the nearest bar. I don't have time. You do, because I happened to run into an infamous fugitive a few years back, by the name of Arturia. Hmm. Wait, calm down, Velov. I wasn't looking for her, it was a coincidence. Seriously, I like to think of myself as a veteran, but just thinking back on that experience sends a shiver down my spine. Where did you see her? Uh, three years ago in Lithanian. Mr. Easel. Cecilia. Richelle. The paperwork is in order, so now she's now free to leave Laterano. Thank you, Richelle. Just doing my job. You know, uh, where are you going, right? Well, we've met up with Federico and... Well, we'll meet up with Federico and join a company by the name of Rhode Island under a corporation agreement. Apparently, it's more convenient this way since we'll be spending a lot of time outside. Good. I've already contacted them. But you're still an executor of the Notorial Hall. Missions will be issued to you through Rhode Island when it's convenient for you to return. That said, I have a hunch that your journey will, uh, with her will go smoothly. You might find what you're looking for sooner rather than later. And my hunches are usually right. Uh, thanks? I'll be going then. Goodbye, Cecilia. Bye-bye, Mr. Richelle. Ah, uh, yikes. I'm getting a bit hunched that something bad's gonna happen. I'm gonna point out that the sneeze is, uh, well, if potentially mentioning him. <laughs> ah, the typical sneeze, right? Richelle is an eccentric one, too. Hey, wait, did he know uh, that we're looking for something? What's wrong, Mr. Azel? 
Nothing. Is there anything else you want to say before we go? Hmm. The girl lets go of the young Sancta's hand and walks to the center of the flower field. I am leaving Laterano, Mama. But I'm not running away. I'm going to find Papa on my own and tell him what you said. I want to see the outside world for myself. I want to see Castel. I'm happy, Mama. Now, just like before. Please, watch over me. Can I pick a white flower? Of course. Thank you. You want to take this flower? Uh-huh. Fresh flowers won't last long. I can press it for you. Will you teach me? I will to learn for myself. Thanks, Mr. Azel. Huh? I'm the one who should be thanking you. Uh, is that? Peisha, are you really coming with me? Of course. I was thinking you could stay here. Laterano doesn't want... Uh, doesn't have what I'm looking for. Hmm? What is it, Peisha? Ex excuse me, that was out of line. But did you just smile? Not to say that you don't normally, it's just that, well, something seems different. Hmm. For many years I thought we walked alone in the wilderness. I was arrogant and immature. Do you hear the old man? Did you hear the old man's speech? I heard the second half when I when it woke me up. It was being broadcasted all over the city loudly. Evangelista, the patron saint of sacrifice and unity. Perhaps he will go even further than the ten who took that name before him. What a grand yet fragile vision. But one upon which I offer my blessings. What did you learn that day? It's not important, Pesha. Not so important, anyway. Even if there is no reward waiting at the end of the journey, the act of continuing onward in itself is in itself carrying the torch. Therefore, I will continue onward. We do not trade for blessings nor for pity. We walk the path that we believe in. Because it is the only way to live with dignity, is it not? We should depart, guide, before the sun sets. Let us go, my brothers and sisters. The girl of mixed blood sees the leader take the first step. The setting sun illuminates the halo on his head like a crown. She recalls the stories of the saints that her mother would tell her and the word that her mother placed so much emphasis on. She does not fully understand its meaning or its symbolism. For some reason though, it comes to mind when she sees that faraway figure. Martyr. What are you looking at, Cecilia? No, nothing. The sunset is beautiful. The girl looks about her, and the flowers, at the church, at the statue, and the bell tower, so far away now. She takes the young Sancta's hand, and the two of them begin to walk into the distance. Her steps are slow, but she does not look back. And there we go. That would be the entire thing. Unless for some reason there is gonna be a story tied to the EX stages, because sometimes some of these events, uh, these, these side stories do have one, maybe one or potentially two cutscenes uh, stashed in the EX stages that have not been released yet. If that is gonna be the case, then, uh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be uploading them as a bonus part, I guess. But we will see that in like... What, on Friday? Ah, whatever. We'll see when the thing, thing unlocks. But... <sighs> what can I say about the story then? 
it was great. It was absolutely amazing to see Lateranos finally do their thing. Because so far, the only thing about Lateranos that pretty much anybody knows is like bits and pieces that gets gets either told by the Laterano operators or um, in certain scenes and stuff. Like probably the most prominent thing about Laterano that has been told, I think is in... Was that in Mosima's um, operator record? I think that was in her operator record. Either there or where, wherever the cutscene I remember uh, with Fiametta is from, the original one. Because Fiametta did appear a long ass while ago in uh, in 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 a cutscene, but I can't remember in a scene, but I can't remember where. Either it was a Code of Brawl epilogue or it was in Mostima's operator record, but I can't remember from the top of my head. But yeah, the, that that was probably the biggest like introduction to Laterano because they vaguely talked about shit but pff, they are absolutely nuts every single laterano citizen is literally like a uh, five-year-old on sugar <laughs> which is funny because they eat a lot of sugary products which is interesting that's a very interesting thing and i think and this is just purely purely um speculation but i think the reason why they are so crazy about sugar and shit is because of the empathy thing because whatever their halos are doing they are probably accessing a lot of brain power to be using such empathy basically it's basically like a uh, light form of mind reading without actually hearing words or anything but just emotions so maybe their brains are just burning through freaking uh, freaking sugar like nuts <laughs> so it became like a normal thing for them to devour that stuff but interesting uh, overall let's see what can I say first off Fiametta is amazing I love how she she literally went so unhinged against Anduin in that last scene before the uh before the last battle, that was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was like, what the hell is she saying? Then went went online to see translations for the Latin that, that she used against it. I was like, all right then, that, uh, those are hefty words. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was beautiful. Uh, then, uh, well, Mosima was part of the game for a long while, and I think... Oh, wait, actually, I didn't do any... The operator records are not voiced or, or anything, so... Well, Mustima was part of the game for a long while, very laid back, couldn't really form my opinion of her besides, well... She's okay. <laughs> she's okay, very, like... I don't want to have anything to do with anything kind of thing, but still looking for something. But alright, we'll see where her story keeps going. Uh, Federico, Jesus Christ. Executor, my god. That guy is uh, just so like straight line. That guy does not deviate. He, he, he's Robocop essentially. He just keeps going. <laughs> that guy is amazing. Fuck's sake. Um, Isel, oh, what can I say? He's a he's a very kind person, but what I will say is, his the the bonding between him and Cecilia from start to finish and keep that will keep on going. This little bond that grows between them, like they 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 are literally becoming like a uh, like a brother and sister pair. The more the story progressed, and probably will progress into the future. It's very endearing, and I love the interaction between those two. Those two are absolutely adorable. And so is uh, pretty much um, Cecilia herself. And uh, I wonder, depending on how this... The, oh, depending. 
the way the story ended, the way what Orin said that he met um, Arturia like three years prior, which is in the what? We are in ninety nine, so ninety six or ninety seven. Uh, which is, I don't know if they're gonna pick up that story and tell that story, because wouldn't three years prior, or am I just missing my math here, wouldn't three years prior be before the main campaign of the game? But Rhode Island was around, Rhode Island was around since the fall, well, not not since the fall of Babel, Rhode, Rhode Island was already there before Babel fell. So there were operators on, on that thing working, but they were working technically for Bobble, but then Bobble fells, then we proceed. I think, where was, when was the main story again taking place in? Which, which year was it? Was it 96 or 97? That's kind of bugging me right now. Because I can't remember. Uh, where was that thing I saved? Oh, by the way, I will link in the description. I found it on Reddit. Someone actually made a timeline very, very recently of when each of the major like side stories and main story are taking place. Uh, mission to rescue. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the mission to rescue the doctor. So the main campaign literally begins at the end of the year 96 and continues into 97. It takes literally place over like, what was it, two or three weeks, so it, it's literally the end of December, beginning of uh, January of 97, 10 to 97. And then a shit ton event of events are taking place until the beginning of 98, which is where uh, episode 9 of the main campaign begins. And this is taking place, so th this story is taking place two years after uh, the events of uh, the events of the main campaign, the main, the start, the very first eight chapters, to put it into perspective, and uh, break the ice, which was a recent event that we witnessed, is uh, taking place pretty much almost right before the beginning of episode nine, because Rhode Island was on its way back. To, uh, well, on its way back, it was on its way to Victoria. So, yeah. That puts stuff into perspective. So, it's been literally two years since the stuff in Kierak happened. So, stuff has calmed down apparently there. Which is nice. It was nice to see uh, uh, Russ, Russ and uh, Yucatan again. Those two are absolutely adorable. And I love it. Um. But yeah, overall, when it comes to what they discussed about Laterana, now the biggest thing here is... Oh, right. Uh, first off, for people who maybe not picking up on it, the lock and key that they keep talking about are the... Uh, technically, the staff weapon that um, Mustima is carrying around. She was entrusted with that thing. And uh, just to clarify, so, so technically, from what I'm picking up what happened in the past... Uh, Anduin got in touch with the lock and key. Mostima apparently, from what I gathered, didn't receive anything from it, so that might be the reason why she gets entrusted with carrying it around, because she doesn't get affected by it. But, um... What's his face? Anduin does get affected by it. Something did happen when he touched it. And uh, whatever happened in that very moment, because it, it still doesn't really get explained or described, but whatever happened in that moment uh, would have been either uh, Lemuen would shoot the, shoot him and kill him on the spot, because uh, she is a sharpshooter and, as we've seen, she doesn't really miss. Uh, but she got incapacitated by Anduin's arts, pretty much put into a coma for five years, as we now know. Uh, but Mustima shot him instead, only wounding him, not killing him. And here is a funny part. I always thought, because of Mustima's backstory and falling from angel to devil, essentially, that that is a process that took 
a while to happen. But apparently it didn't take a while to happen. Apparently it happened almost instantly. As from Fiametta's statement there, uh, th those horns appeared in a matter of hours on her head. And po probably the tail as well. So she literally went through a metamorphose, metamorphosis the moment she shot Anduin. Which now puts on the question of why didn't the Pope and Anduin... It's probably a thing that people are asking. I think I've seen questions here and there. Why didn't the Pope and Anduin uh, transform? Because they both opened fire with their... Uh, uh, with their uh, guns on each other. Well, one way to interpret it would be, as the Pope is stating, the law is pretty much the thing that is dictating the Sancta's lives. So the law could be interpreted as a as the it that um, Anduin has been talking in that one sequence. Meaning that it is alive and is observing every single one of them. Just as a reminder, even though Fiametta says it as an insult, she does call the Sancta to be like a hive mind. Which might actually be the case. It was a throwaway line by Fiametta as an insult, but it might actually be a case of... That might actually be why they have halos. They are but receivers in between each other just to transmit whatever has to be transmitted. Because we still don't know what is below the Basilica, where the Pope led Anduin down, but we do know that something is down there, and that something represents, I guess, the law, and the law is overseeing everything in uh, in uh, in Laterano and potentially across all of the Sancta, no matter where they are. So if the law deems that person needs to be punished for uh, breaking a commandment, then it will uh, punish that person. It basically disposes of the bugs. It's literally like a, yeah, it's literally like a programmer looking at their program running, and if they see a bug, they just take it out, right? That's literally what it seems like. But yeah, we do not do not know what is down there. It could be one of the godlike entities like they are in any of the other countries. Uh, or it could be some lost technology supercomputer. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> like, who the hell knows? There are things in the, this world of Terra that are unexplained until they get explained someday in the story. Many, many mysteries. But we'll see where that will lead to. A very interesting part. But yeah, essentially, they fired at each other, but they both have a strong interpretation and conviction about what the law is. And probably if the law is an actual living thing or observing thing of all things Sancta, then it probably was like, I still need you both. I still need you both to be in the position you are. And you didn't hit each other, so it's fine. Move on. So that's an interesting thing to look at. Uh, I do find it interesting that all of them, literally right now, go to Rhode Island. Back to Rhode Island. Some of them are going back to Rhode Island. Like, Executor has already worked with Rhode Island, as they are stating it. So we know he already joins uh, with Rhode Island way before this uh, stories event takes, takes place. Uh, Fiametta just now will join. And judging by Fiametta's, um, Fiametta's file, I think it was where I read that, uh, it will be about, probably about a month at least until they reach there, because <laughs> the file has a completely different code name. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's great. If you guys have Fiametta, I encourage you to look at that code name, it's amazing. <laughs> uh... But yeah, so Fiametta joins now, Azel is joining now, he brings with himself uh, Cecilia as well, so Cecilia will be on board of Rhode Island too, which is an interesting prospect. But then again, this story is taking place two years into the future of the current main story, so unless they continue the story 
of this further into the future, we probably won't see Cecilia again. Considering that the events that take place in the past will, and if they're taking place on Rhode Island, will not be showing her at all. Uh, I do find it funny that Mustima is being forced to go <laughs> and interact with uh, Exia <laughs> by her sister. Also, who, whichever parent thought that it might be a cute thing to name their two daughters Lemuen and Lemuel. Ugh. If they were, if they would have been twins, that would have been horrible. But thank, thank the Lord, they are not twins. So yeah, that the person that uh, Lemuen has been talking about in the prior episode that ends, that she only calls L, is a cute little nickname, is Exia, and she even carries a little. Exia doll continuously in her uh, in her art. So that's cute. Uh, what else? But yeah, already voiced my opinion on the uh, at the beginning of this very episode on the uh, middle part of this story where Andoin goes about life and death and all that stuff. That's still probably the most interesting and best written part of the story in my opinion the whole whole segment was pretty good uh, but yeah uh, finally I just want to say uh, over the next day or two and I'll put it in the comment for people to see because I do believe not many people will be here at the end just listening to me ramble um, there will be two uh, two uploads that are definitely connected to this whole thing. Uh, for one, uh, you can already go and watch the, if you haven't already, watch the um, operator record for Fiametta. If you don't have her or have not uh, got her trust already high enough up. That operator record is literally functioning as yet another smaller um, epilogue to this story. Because it's Fiametta's little, um, uh, like, little goodbye to her uh, foster parent as she's going on a trip again. And it's very cute and wholesome. I, I love the interaction between her and, uh, and that guy. It's mwah, really, really heartwarming. Uh, then the next two days, there are going to be two uploads. One is going to be, both are going to be short stories for that come with the modules of Fiametta and uh, and uh, Mostima. Mostimas will probably be first tomorrow because that one is oh boy that one is uh that one is a doozy that that is an interesting one to read through and theorize on and what the hell happened during that one uh the other one is Fiametta's and Fiametta's is uh Kinda linking to her, uh, what I just said to her operator record and her foster parent, and uh, it's very, it's very cute and kinda, hmm, okay. I guess that's normal in Laterano. <laughs> but yeah, those two stories will go up the next few days, and obviously I still have one operator record to uh, record and, and uh, post, which is Murph, which should be up on the channel in. Um, a day or two I think I haven't been using her much so I had to grind out a bit, bit of her trust so I think she's like almost almost there right now maybe a few percent missing so that will be also going up on the channel but yeah regardless this has been an amazing story loved every bit of it the characters were great I wonder when and how and if they're gonna somehow continue this considering this one is already taking place so far into the future uh of the narrative so yeah we'll we'll see when where, if they go anywhere from here but yeah i think that would be enough for today's uh upload i'm rambling already long enough at the end of this thing so yeah, I hope you all uh, have a great day. I hope you get Fiametta if you're pulling on her once again. On her banner, I mean. Uh, and if not, still, good luck. Whatever.
whatever banner comes next i think we're gonna have a couple of what is what is actually next the next big thing is the next main story part i believe oh yeah which brings me to uh next week beginning of next week potentially monday i'll continue the narration for the main story uh and uh, then we'll see what is coming around i think we're gonna have a repeat of an old event which should be a walk in the dust if that is gonna be next or sorry not next week but the week after that's probably gonna be the first next side story that i'm gonna be narrating on the channel considering i obviously it's obviously already in the game so i'm uh actually i don't know if it's in the game for people who are new to the game but uh it's it's in the game it's accessible you can open it so uh, i'll probably do a recording start recording before the event goes live so i can post it on on the very day and oh my god that if, if it is that event oh that, that's gonna be so much easier to narrate oh, it's only a handful of characters compared to this this one had so many characters oh my god this was pushing me to the limit <laughs> jesus christ too many people oh but yeah anyway this has been fun this has been fun to do this one especially especially with this many this was really pushing me so yeah like i said more uploads in the future and stuff and stories and narrations and all all the things you'll see when they pop up but for now this has been jacob i hope you have a fantastic rest of the day and week and i will see you in the next video but until then I need to rest my voice and drink more tea. So for now, bye bye.